Should children have phones? This is a question I get asked regularly and a question that I have to ask myself as the mother of five. So let me give you a few L's that might be good guidance for you as you're thinking through this subject. The first L is let them beg. <laughs> what I mean by this is that many parents come to me telling me, but I felt so much pressure to give my child a smartphone because they begged me for it. They pulled out all the stops. They told me that all their friends have one. They're the only one without a phone. And I just, my heart was breaking. I didn't want them to be the weird one. I didn't want them to get teased. They're getting left out of all the groups. And to this, I say, it's okay for children to mount a full revolution and to protest and to beg. And that's not a reason to do anything. At the end of the day, you are the adult. You are privy to information and a full developed prefrontal cortex and an understanding of the consequences of your choices. You're also the responsible party here financially, legally, and in every other way besides. And so the decision is yours. This isn't a decision to give to a child, just like any other consequential decision would be too much and unfair to put on a child. I mean, later on, when your child comes to you with complaints about how you've lowered their attention span, how they were completely tech addicted or worse, porn addicted, etc., are you going to say, well, you begged me for it? It was your fault? It was your choice? We can't do that as parents. We have to have the final say and make the final choices. And that means we really need to think this through. So I would be very unimpressed with begging. When my children tell me that all their friends have phones, I say, okay, good for them. That's what their parents have decided. If they were your parents, they would let you have a phone, but I'm your parent and I don't. I'm unapologetic whilst empathic. I understand that they wish they could have one. I know what it's like to be left out. It doesn't feel great. But I also believe in my children that they can handle being left out, that they can find a way around it, that they're still cool kids, that they're still going to have friends, and that phones are not the key to great relationships. And that they actually are going to learn an even better lesson here than just getting a phone in order to fit in. They're going to learn that you don't have to fit in, that you can manage without just following the Joneses and keeping up with everybody, and that there is values and kind of decisions that we make that other people can't influence, that we don't just need to be like sheep herded around by other people's decisions. And that's something I try to articulate to them and explain to them. Listen, if we thought getting you a phone was a good idea, we would get one. But we actually have our own brains, our own hearts, our own values. And this doesn't align with our family vision or our family values for the moment. And so it's a no. And we're really uninterested, to be honest, in what other people might be doing. Number two is to lose your phone. This is probably the hardest one here, but the truth is that it is a little bit unfair to be constantly addicted and stuck on your phone and having it everywhere you go all the time whilst telling your children that they need to wait to get theirs in the future. And so it's something we do need to manage. Now, granted, many of us really are dependent on using our phones for our adult lives. It's how we do our supermarket shopping, our emails, our work, our connection with grandma, our entertainment, all sorts of different things happen on our phones. So one of the things that we can do to mitigate this a little bit is to communicate with our children what we're doing on our phone. If they just see us like this with a completely opaque screen, from their perspective, maybe we're playing Minecraft, maybe we're just shopping all day, maybe we're on Instagram, but you might tell them, no, actually, I'm reading an article article or I'm doing some work, I'm doing research, I'm buying the groceries. Whatever it is you're doing, I would be transparent about that as much as possible so that they can learn that for you, a phone isn't just a game console. For you, you're actually doing important errands and communication on your phone. Now, with that said, I would still advise losing it. In our family, we keep a tech Sabbath once a week where the adults and the children are all off screens for at least the entire weekend, right? For at least 24 hours. And so that's a great time to lose our phone. But we also try to take tech breaks every day. For example, there are no phones at our dinner table, and that goes for adults too. And sometimes that takes a little bit of enforcing, but that's a really great way to role model and practice what you preach. If children aren't allowed phones, that doesn't mean adults aren't allowed phones. After all, we're different. We have a different status. We have different responsibilities, different brains, etc. But it would be really, really beneficial to model less use of the phone in order to show our children that we too have to exercise, you know, self-control and restraint and manage our tech usage wisely. The next L is low tech. When my children actually 
did need, I say need in quotation marks, but when they needed a phone, let's put it this way, when I wanted them to have a phone for communication purposes, the first step along the way is a low tech phone. So something like a dumb phone, right? And this would be a phone that does not connect to the internet, that does not have a camera, but literally just dials mom and dad, maybe another few numbers, and we can dial them. This might be a watch phone. Uh, this might be just an old school dumb phone. But the idea here is a phone for the purpose of communication only. So say your kid is getting more independent, they're going to school and you need to know when to pick them up or play dates, that type of thing. Uh, when they're around the age maybe of eight, nine, something like that, it can start to become really useful for them to be able to communicate with you and vice versa. But this is not the time for them to have the world in their pocket, right? The internet connection and all of that opens a whole nother can of worms. This is actually quite a boring phone, but the whole goal of the phone is literally to be able to communicate. In this case, I would steer clear of cameras and internet connection, and I would try to minimize the amount of games and music and other things you could do on this device. The goal really is maybe a timekeeper, but primarily just to be able to speak to you and maybe text you and for you to be able to speak and text with your child. This is a really good step and I would linger here as long as possible. So well into the tween years. This is the place where it's really all good. You can communicate, they have what they need. There is zero reason for them to be connected to email or to browsers or even to WhatsApp groups. This is the time for them to simply be able to communicate very baseline communication. And the low tech step is a really good step that I think should last for years. That brings me to my next L, which is later is better. Yes, I do absolutely believe that later is better with many, many things regarding technology, but primarily with a smartphone. So I would try your very hardest, and it shouldn't really be that hard because you're the one with the purse strings, you're the one who decides what to spend your money on, what to buy, what to bring into your house. And so you can absolutely decide that you're putting this off as much as possible. I've been part of schools where the parents got together and we all decided that there won't be any smartphones. I've been part of a school where the kids can bring phones, dumb or smart, but they put them away in a locker for the entire day to give the kids a phone-free experience of school. And I think these are very, very well thought out plans that you can initiate in your own organization. Unfortunately, phones are showing up younger and younger. And I don't need to bring you the bucketfuls of research that shows that this is not good for kids. It does detract from their attention span. It does detract from their relationships, from their ability to enjoy a book, to focus on work, to be free and uninhibited, not to mention all of the depressing and anxiety producing ideas and bad ideas that are just being spread on social media applications. So, Whilst I say later is better, even when your child does eventually get a smartphone, say because they do need email, maybe in high school, maybe they do need some WhatsApp groups in middle school, that would be the time to exercise full parental controls. So this is the place where you want to make sure that it's almost like a dumb phone. That yeah, they have a few things they can do, like internet connection for specific things, maybe email, like I've said, etc. But that it's not just a wide open sea of content and of social media. The two main things that I want you to watch out for there are anything that have algorithms or strangers. So these are big no-nos in my family. My kids do not have applications where they are exposed to the general public, where there's an audience to build, where they might go viral. These are the types of things that actually create some really detrimental and dangerous things within children's brains and experience and life. And that's where I would truly steer clear. So if your child likes making videos, let them make videos and share it with a closed group of people that they know, only people that they know in a very closed environment. Let them have private or unlisted channels if they have to have one at all. Um, and I would really minimize and stay on the later path, right? They can always open an Instagram account later. There's really no reason to expose them to that kind of thing now. I mean, think about it quite similarly as you might think about alcohol, right? Where it's just not for kids. <laughs> it's something that you do 
carefully and in measured amounts when you're an adult. And maybe kids have a little taste of wine here and there with their parents, but it's not something they're doing on their own. They're not just going to go and buy themselves a bottle of beer as kids. That's something we're going to be careful about because we know that that's extremely unhealthy for them and quite dangerous. So similarly with apps like TikTok, you know, I would say that's just not something any child should be on at any time for any reason, right? And that's something you really want to limit until later. But even if you decide for whatever reason that you are going to expose, you've got to make sure you've got those parental controls set up really well so that you can flag things that aren't healthy. Now, I know that a lot of children feel that parental controls are an invasion of their privacy. Fair enough. It absolutely is. And that's not the best feeling for them at all. On the other hand, it's also really very much for their protection. The type of freedom that they might seek is the type of thing you can only really gain when you're old enough and responsible enough to exercise that freedom and understand the risk and benefits. And they can't understand that. They are just not able to have informed consent to this type of exposure. And so I take a very hard line on that, that it's really unwise to give them any kind of social media free-for-all exposure as children. And then my final L for today is just less. Less time when we need phones, less use of the phones as something that is a tool in our lives. And what that means is that we actually have to create a lifestyle that offers them lovely alternatives. There's a lot of L's for you, right? But let's talk about that lifestyle. Look, if our lifestyle involves things like hiking and baking and sewing and swimming and time with friends and hosting and traveling and reading and all sorts of interests, if it has a rich academic, intellectual, social, spiritual, emotional life, then we don't need to fill it with the scroll, right? That deadening, emptying effect of just consumption, right? We don't want our children to be little consumers where all they're doing is just watching reels and watching shows and watching and watching and watching and reading tweets. This is not a life. This is not productive. This is not good for them. There's no evidence to suggest that that will benefit them in any way, shape, or form. And that's why I talk about lifestyle. What are you doing outside of the phone? What's going on? See, the thing is that once a tween or a teen gets a smartphone, then they're going to be, like all of us, addicted and drawn to just filling any empty space in their life with the scroll. And so we need to make sure that there aren't that many empty spaces in their life, (laughs) that their life is full of other things, of a love of nature, of a love of helping out, of being productive. Maybe they could start a business and make money. Maybe they can learn a skill. Now, if they are on their phone, give them something positive on there to do. Sign them up for interesting masterclasses and courses. Give them a Kindle with interesting books on there. Make sure that the content on their phone is as curated and as carefully thought through as the content in your home should be. What are we exposing them to in their physical diets, in their sleep, in their surroundings, in the air that we breathe? We're careful about these things. We filter them. And that's what we need to do on their devices as well. All right, there's so much more I have to say about phones and technology and screen time. So let me know if you'd like a part two on this and definitely drop your questions below. I'm Avital, this is Hi Fam, and it's been a great pleasure to talk to you about phones today. If you found this interesting, let me know which tip was most helpful for you in the comments below. And make sure to share this with another parent who might be struggling, wondering what to do about phones. I'll see you in the next video.